Welcome back to our second lesson in Chapter 7, Energy Changes. And we looked last time at exothermic and endothermic reactions. We're going to do a quick recap of that. Then we're going to look at an important topic, bond energy calculations. There's obviously going to be maths involved in this. We're going to calculate the energy transferred in a reaction. So we're going to do a calculation to work out exactly how much energy is transferred in a reaction whether it's transferred in from the surroundings or it's transferred out to the surroundings. Now, we said last lesson, we talked about exothermic and endothermic reactions. Can you remember what the difference is between an exothermic and an endothermic reaction? So, with exo, the clue is the word ex, as in exit, it's going out, energy is given out. So in an exothermic reaction, energy is given out, it's given out to the surroundings. Energy is given out to the surroundings. What happens to the temperature of the surroundings then in an exothermic reaction? They get hot. You remember you'll see that on the video last week. On an endothermic reaction then, the opposite, energy is taken in from the surroundings. What happens to the surroundings, or the, temp the temperature of the surroundings, increases, it gets colder. We've got here as a recap. In an exothermic reaction, energy is transferred to the surroundings. In an endothermic reaction, energy is transferred from the surroundings. Pause the video there if you need to copy that down. Now we said, before a reaction starts, energy must be supplied to the reactants. So the reactants are the things that we have at the start of a reaction, the reactants. For, for the reaction to even start, we have to put energy in. What do you think that energy is going to have to do to the reactant? Now we've done topics on bonding, the different types of bonds, but all, all our reactants are bonded together. If we're going to want to make them react, we're going to have to break the bonds in the reactants. So before a reaction starts, energy must be supplied to the reactants. What is this energy used for? It is used to break, to break the bonds of the reactants. So in any reaction, some energy has to go in to break the bonds of the reactants. Right? In every reaction, we need to break those bonds to get the reaction started. If we can't break the bonds in the reactants, they're never going to rearrange and form new products, form new substances in a chemical reaction. We have to break the bonds. And then the reaction starts. We've broken the bonds of the reactants. What's going to happen then? These atoms, or these ions, they're going to now rearrange and they're going to form new bonds. And it's that forming of new bonds that's then going to release energy. So during the reaction, energy is released. What process releases the energy? Well, that is making new bonds. The products. So, to recap, for a reaction to happen, we have to break the bonds of the reactants, and that's going to need energy. Then new bonds are going to be made, and that is going to release energy. And the balance between using energy to break the bonds and releasing energy to make the bonds make new bonds, is going to decide whether the reaction overall is exothermic and endothermic. An important sentence here to get your head around. The difference between the energy needed to break bonds, so it's energy needed to break bonds in the reactants, and the energy released when bonds are made, is the overall energy change of the reaction. And that sentence is a bit complicated, it's a bit long. We'll simplify that and we'll like try and explain what that means. But ultimately, we're gonna to have to work out how much energy is used to break bonds and how much energy is released when new bonds are made. So here's an example. This is an equation we've seen many times. It's magnesium plus oxygen making magnesium oxide. And it's balanced for you. What we've got here is some bond energy values. And this tells us the amount of energy we would need to break a bond. 
it also tells us how much energy will be released when that bond was made. So if we look on this side, we've got, if we keep it very, very simple, we've got two magnesium atoms that are bonded together. In reality, we would have millions of them. Well, let's say we've got two magnesium atoms that are bonded together. We've got an oxygen molecule, O2, that's bonded together. What are we going to have to do to the bonds on this side to get the magnesium and oxygen to react? To get the magnesium and oxygen to react, we're going to have to break those bonds. So on this side, these bonds need breaking. And that needs energy. So we're going to have to put some energy in to break those bonds. Once we've broken these bonds, the magnesium atoms and the oxygen atoms, they're going to join together. They're going to make magnesium oxide. They're going to go. They're going to make new bonds. Now, you might be a bit sceptical about the diagrams, but I'm keeping this very, very simple. So I've now made some new magnesium oxygen bonds. So on this side, bonds are made. On this side, bonds are made. Now, like we said before, breaking the bonds needs energy. Making new bonds, this releases energy. We have to break the bonds of the reactants and we're going to make new bonds in the products. Okay? What we would then need to know is Very, very important term. The energy change then, the energy change is a mathematical term, is, you may have seen this in maths as well, that is the sum of, so the energy change is the sum of the bonds broken minus the sum of the bonds made. And you may have noticed up here that we have values for the energy of the specific bonds in this reaction. I'm going to draw the magnesium and oxygen again. Hopefully you've already drawn that. Right. So now we've got the energy change is the sum of the bonds broken minus the bonds made. We're going to keep it very simple though, the way I remember it, it's going to be broken minus made. So let's look at the reactants. We have to break this magnesium to magnesium bond. Right. So the broken on this side, the magnesium magnesium bond, as you'll see, has got an energy value of 201 kilojoules per mole. So my broken is 201. I also have to break an oxygen, oxygen bond. Now it's a double bond, and that does actually make the bond stronger, but it doesn't change the way we do our calculation. So our bonds broken will be 201 plus 498. You do the maths, as you say. Then we're going to take away from that all the bonds that we've made. Now we've made a magnesium and oxygen bond. But we've actually made two of them. So it isn't just take away 502. It's take away 502 times two because we are making two energy bonds. 
Going back to the calculator, give you a moment. Pause the video. Hopefully you've got an answer of minus 305. We wouldn't be asked about the units, but the units would be kilojoules per mole. And you'll notice it's a negative number. This reaction has a negative energy change. Because it is negative, that's my shorthand for negative, that tells us the reaction is exothermic. And I'm going to tell you more later how I know that, but a negative value for our answer tells us that the reaction is exothermic. This is a complicated idea. All the bonds broken minus all the bonds made gives us the overall energy change. Got another example here. Hydrogen plus bromine makes hydrogen bromide. I've got the bond energies here. We would normally get a diagram of either of the atoms or of the or of circles of particles to give us an idea of the bonds that are involved. But hopefully we'll see. This is H2, which means I've got a H attached to a H. And I've got a Br attached to a Br. What am I going to have to do to these bonds? I'm going to have to break them. So what is the energy change for breaking the bonds? So it is, as you can see, how we're doing 436 plus 431. On the other side, I'm making HBr, which I have a HBr bond. But look, there's two of them. So I'm going to have to make two HBr bonds. So my, when I do my broken minus make, I've got my broken on this side, 436 plus 431, but I'm taking away 242 times 2 to work out the overall energy change. I'm going to pause the video, you're going to do that. Hopefully you get an answer of 343, or positive 343. Now this is a positive value. What does that tell me about this particular reaction? Well, it is endothermic. It is endothermic. And it is the difference between the broken and the made that's going to determine whether our answer is positive or negative, therefore determine whether our reaction is exothermic or endothermic. So it says, why are some reactions exothermic? If you think about the numbers we've done, and this is a key sentence that we have to learn, why are some reactions exothermic? Well, what was bigger, the value to break the bonds or the value when new bonds were made? What was bigger? If a reaction is exothermic, we can say more energy is released making new bonds than was taken in breaking bonds. That is such a key sentence and principle to get your head around. More energy is released making new bonds than was taken in breaking bonds. That's what makes the reaction exothermic. Why are some then endothermic? Well, it's the opposite. Less energy is released making new bonds than was taken in breaking bonds bonds. We're going to have to try and find a way of how we're going to learn these two sentences. Endothermic, less energy is released, making new bonds and was taken in breaking bonds. We're going to write that down. So the 
pause the video if you need to. And until we do more examples, you might think this is, this is a bit complicated. And it is complicated. What we're going to do now is find the bond energy calculation practice sheet. The bond energy calculation practice sheet. Pause the video while you find that. And we're going to use your bond energy data sheet. You've got that as well, so it's like A5 sheet calculate the energy needed to break the bond, the energy release when new bonds are made, and the total energy change. That looks complicated. You're going to need that sheet. Hopefully you found that. One thing to mention, the nitrogen bond on this sheet is actually a nitrogen triple bond. Three lines. I couldn't get the computer to do that. Please want to amend that sheet. Well, let's have a look at this first one. We've got a reaction of hydrogen plus oxygen making water. Now we would need to know that hydrogen is a H bonded to a H. And there's two of them. Two H2 and C. Oxygen is an O with a bond to an R. Water is an O attached to two H's. Sorry about that. But don't forget there's two of them. So what we're going to do, we're going to work out the energy needed to break all the bonds in the reactors. We're going to work out the broken, first of all. So what are we going to have using our sheet? If you find the HH bond, we're going to have 2 times 436, which is that one and that one, plus we have to break the oxygen bond, which is 498. So what is the energy needed to break all the bonds? You work it out, pause the video. You should have got 1,370. Then we're going to work out the energy release when new bonds are formed in the products over here. How many bonds can you see? There's actually four. One, two, three, four. There's four bonds. And you'll notice they're all OH bonds. The all O's, the oxygen atoms, join to H. And they all have a value of 464. So the energy release when the new bonds are made is four times 464, which is 1,856. The energy change then is broken, minus made, to give you a value of minus 486. Look at that value, is it exothermic or endothermic? It's exothermic. And this explains the idea before about why some reactions are exothermic. More energy was released here, making the new bonds, than was taken in, breaking the original bonds. So that second value is bigger. It released more energy than it took in. So this is an exothermic reaction. Now we're going to go through the next few. I'm not going to do too much talking though, but I'm going to write on the board. I want you to have a think about what's going on. Well, while I'm going to help you on these, I'm going to draw the pictures of the molecules. And this, hopefully, will help you think what are the bonds that are broken and made. That's just me kicking vinegar. So don't forget, we're breaking those and we are making those. Use your data sheet to find the values. You want to have a go first, pause the video. What we're going to do 
got to look at, first of all, for the breaking here, we've got one, two, three, four. We've got four times a CH bond, and the CH bond is 435. Then we've got an OO bond, but there's two of them. So it's plus two times, I lost it then for a minute, times 498. That gives us a value of 2736. On this side, the bond we've made, we've got OH bonds, two of them in one water, but there's two waters. So again, it's four times four, six, four. Okay. Then we're making a CO bond and another CO bond. So that'll be two times 803. Gives us an energy change, sorry, an energy value with three, four, six, two. We do broken minus made, get a value again of minus seven, two, six. So once again, it's exothermic. Pause the video and have a look at that. So, I've drawn the structure of, this is something called hydrogen, and oxygen, and that reacts to form nitrogen and water. So now we've got a much more complicated molecule here. So we're going to look very closely at everything that's in the hydrogen. First of all, can you see, there is four NH bonds that we need to break. Four of them. So that'll be four times 389. I've also got to break this bond here, the NN single bond. If you look in your sheet, that is 158. I've also got to break that OO bond, which is 498. So what's the value to break all the bonds? 2212. Then over here, we're making an N, N triple bond, which is 945. And again, like before, we've got four OH bonds. Four times four, six, four. Gives the value of two A, O, one. The energy change this time, minus five, eight, nine. For the next one, we've got nitrogen, three lots of hydrogen, and we're making two lots of ammonia. Don't forget, so we're going to work out our broken minus our made. I'm not going to show all the working out this time for you, so pause the video while I and you try and work out the two values for the energy to break the bonds, energy release for the bonds are made. Pause the video. And if you look at that, and we can figure out where has he got that value from, 2253, from these bonds. 1 NN bond, 3 HH bond. Where has he got that value from? How many NH bonds are made? 1, 2, 3. But there's two ammonias, so that would be 6 
NH bonds. This is complicated stuff. I always say that, though. What I want you to do is pause the video and now look, find a past exam question that starts with methane reacts with chlorine. And have a go at that, so that's a real GCSE question. Pause the video, find that, have a look. It looks like this. Hopefully you've come back. We've got a break, I've got it down here. It's methane, CH4. So, how I would have set this out in the big space, I would have done my broken minus made. I've got a break four CH bonds. So it's four times four, one, three. Plus, CL, CL bond, plus 243. And hopefully you've got the number 1895 written down on your page. Because if you do, you're getting a mark for that. On the other side, we're making three CH bonds. So it'll be three times 413. We're making a CCL bond there, which is 327. And we're making a HCL bond, which is 432. And hopefully you've got a value there of 1998. And we're going to do broken minus made to get an answer of minus 1. 103. So we'd, we'd usually get three marks for that. One for the bonds broken, one for the bonds made, one for the energy change. Why is this reaction exothermic? Well, if we look at the numbers, it's a clear, it's clear to see. This number here, the bonds made is a bigger number than the bonds broken. So we've got to make sure we get our sentence correct. So why is it exothermic? Because more energy was released, making new bonds than was Taking in, breaking, sorry about the pen, you've seen that before though, breaking bonds. This sentence gets mixed up so often. The mores and the less, the breaking, the making, the released, the taking in. So easy to get confused. But on this example, if it's exothermic, it will always be the case that more energy is released making new bonds than was taken in breaking bonds. What you do now is gonna find the double-sided examination question that starts with a Bunsen burner releases energy. And you are going to answer that question. I'm gonna pause the video. The answer will be shared with you. Now, that's it. You're going to get more questions next lesson about energy changes and how to calculate the energy change in a reaction. Any problems, speak to your teacher. Hope that makes sense. Thank you very much.